welcome everyone. So this workshop today is going to be about developing on top of Ethermint. So yeah, so let's get into it. Um, so about me, I'm Elizabeth. I'm a software engineer at Chainsafe. Uh, I've been working here for slightly over two years. Um, I'm working currently on Gossamer, which is a Polkadot host implementation in Go. Um, Ethermint, of course, and uh, Filecoin secondary markets. So yeah, and this is my GitHub if you would like to take a look. So yeah, so what's Ethermint? So Ethermint is an EVM module built using the Cosmos SDK framework. So, um, so this means it runs on Tendermint proof of state consensus, but it is the EVM on top of it. Um, yeah, it uses the same EVM as Go Ethereum. So every, all the logic is exactly the same. And additionally, it also implements the Ethereum JSON RPC API. So this means you can make um, the usual RPC calls to Ethermint as you would with Ethereum. So yeah. So it's some of the projects on Ethermint. So currently there is Aragon Chain, which is in development. Um, so this is uh, like Aragon network on top of Ethermint. Um, yeah, so that is hopefully gonna be launched this later this year. Um, and then there's also an Ethermint zone, which is going to be a fully fledged Ethermint chain, which will also, which is also in development. Uh, yeah, so, and then, so why Ethermint in particular? So, so basically it is proof of stake. Um, it's the promised proof of stake Ethereum, but it is, exists right now, which is cool. Um, and also additionally to that is compatible with all the existing Ethereum tooling. So this is what I'm going to show you today. So this is including, but not limited to, Web3.js, MetaMask, Truffle, and Remix. So those are the ones I'm going to show you today. So yeah. Um, so this is a link to the demo instructions I'm going to go through. So I'm going to just paste this in the chat. And then this is also a link to the docs. So it's just docs.ethermint.zone. Um, so everything will also be uploaded onto the doc site and you can also find additional info on there as well about just Ethermint in general. Um, so I'll put that in the chat to everyone. So yeah, cool. So, all right, that's all for that basically. Um, just a quick little intro. <laughs> so, okay, so so yeah, first steps. So the first thing we need to do is just build Ethermint and then set up a local node um, just on your computer to develop with. So yeah, so I've already, I already have Ethermint on here. Um, I could, yeah, so the first step is basically just cloning the repo. I guess I can delete it and do that again. Um, We don't have any branches on here. I don't think I do. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna reclone it. And then go to make sure we're on development, cool. And then just do make install. So this builds the node and then installs emint D and emint CLI um, on your computer. So emint D is the ethermint daemon or node and then even cli um is the cli for it so the even the cli deals with things like adding new keys um importing keys um you can start the, the rpc rest server that way um, as well as other things so yeah so I, I can show you a little bit of that so yeah so even cli so you have stuff for querying transactions the server keys etc and then emint D is the actual daemon. So all of this stuff to do with the actual node. So initializing it, um, creating your genesis uh, and actually running the node. So cool. So now that that is built, I will, so the first thing I'm gonna show is um, just a truffle project. So, 
So I'm just going to make a new directory for this. Whoops. And then if you don't already have Truffle on your computer, you will need to do um, just install it. So just npm install global Truffle. So I'm currently using v5.1.31, I think. I think any version 5 and up would work, though. Uh, yeah. So I'm just going to wait for that. If people have questions, make sure to uh, send the, those to me. We can stop anytime and address them. I want to make sure that everyone follows up with Elizabeth in the same time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, feel free to ask if you have anything or if I missed anything or if it's unclear. Um, yeah, so, okay, so I have Truffle now. So we will just do Truffle in it to make a new project. Cool. Okay. And then go to, so we're just gonna let's open this in the text editor. And I will make a, let me make this a bit nicer. Um, um, yeah, I'm just gonna write a simple contract for this. Um, this is just gonna be counter. So it's not gonna do anything too exciting, but count. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, function add, so this can be, um, this is obviously just a demo, so you can, this will work with any contract that compiles. <laughs> uh, and then, all right and then save it whoops where am i okay counter dot soul cool so contract is done hopefully it compiles if i wrote it correctly like it compiled cool um, so yeah so now the next step is going to be to just configure our truffle config so um, so yeah so ethermint by default runs on localhost 8545 um, like the RPC server so I'm just going to uncomment this and you can also um, I'll show you that you can specify the network ID when you start the node as well but I'm just gonna leave it as star for now since doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, so that's that's all for that. And then now we can actually start the local node. Yay! So there's already a script in here that um, starts everything. Uh, I can show you what's in it, actually. So all of this is in the, the docs as well. So installs um, emit d, emit, emit cli. Um, yeah, configures it to use a test keyring, and then config yeah basically just configures the chain ID, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, adds your key, so we're, our key right now is just named my key, um, and then it initializes the the um, the chain, adds a Genesis account, which is my key, um, and it gives some balance to this key as well. Um, and then it signs the Genesis transaction, um, basically sets up all the Genesis stuff. This enables the faucet. So if you don't need a faucet on your node, this isn't a necessary step. Um, and then, yeah, then validates that the Genesis file is valid and actually starts the node. So yeah, I'm just gonna run that. Cool, okay. And then it prints out this command for starting the RPC server. So yes, yeah, so you can see that the node has started and it is executing some blocks. 
So yeah, we're at block three. Woo! So yeah, RPC server is now up as well. So we can now start um, making queries to it and migrating our code. So I'm just going to do truffle migrate. So the network that I'm using is just development. So. Cool. Okay, I want to make sure everyone is up to speed and is following up closely. So we're going to pause here. And if people have questions, we can address them. So you can either send them here in private or you can use uh, Discord. Yeah, just uh, send the questions here and I can read those to um, Elizabeth. Or you can send those to Elizabeth. You can send her also. Yeah. Let's see. Looks like there's some stuff here. Does it support the same transaction format as Ethereum? Um, Maybe you can um, uh, read the questions, uh, the question out loud for everyone also to. Yeah. So um, I was asked, how, does this support the same transaction format as Ethereum? So yeah, it does. So um, yeah, if you do an RPC call, for example, for ETH underscore send transaction, it's like the exact same format as um, like a normal Ethereum transaction. I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to demo that later actually, um, using the geth console to do that. Um, yeah, so yeah, it is the, the same format. Internally, it's slightly different, I believe, but externally, it's the same. So yeah, any more? Let's see. Is it using the Ethereum Patricia tree? Um, so yeah, so I was asked, is it using the Ethereum Patricia tree? Uh, this is a good question. Um, yeah, I'm not totally sure. I don't think it is. Um, yeah, I'll have to get back to you on that one, but I don't think it is. <laughs> Unless, yeah, I'll have to think about it. Yeah, I don't think the state root is going to match Ethereum's, even if you sent the same transactions. But that could just be because it's stored differently. So, yeah, I'll have to look into that one and get back to you. Cool. Okay. Anything? Let's see what else. This shouldn't be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, it's most likely using the IAVL tree that Tendermint uses, which makes sense. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, if there's no more questions, I, for now, I can continue. Um, Adriana, did you get any? Or? Yeah, I have no other questions on my side. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll just continue then. Uh, so yeah, so, okay, so I migrated the contract. Woo! So contract is on here. So I'm going to scroll back. And yeah, you can see here that this was the transaction for deploying migrations.sol, I think. And then, uh, what's happening here? Okay, yeah, so it deploys migrations.sol for here. And then I think this one is for the actual counter.sol. So yeah, so cool. Okay, so now we can do some tests. Um, okay. So I'm just going to make a quick little truffle test for this. 
Encounter test just so. I'm just going to say the account zero is the from account. There's only um, one account right now. Um, yeah, I'll show you. Maybe I'll just, I'll show the Geth console just to make this clearer. But I'll go into this in more depth later. Um, oh, whoops. Uh, okay, so ETH.accounts. So yes, this is our one and only account right now. Um, let's counter. This will be our instance. So yeah. Um, I'm assuming most of the people here have probably done truffle stuff before. So if any of this is unclear, just like let me know. Uh, so yeah, this is just a basic truffle test to uh, deploy and call the contract. So I'm going to call counter.add, so just this function to increment the counter, and then get the count. So this will be counter.getCount, and then assert that the count equals one, and then just a quick error message. Cool. Okay, so if I wrote this correctly, should should test. So now we can just do truffle test network development as before. Um, hopefully, there's no scary JavaScript errors here. Um, cool. Okay, yeah, so it's adding some transactions for deploying. And it's also probably going to do one for addition and getting the counter. Cool. OK, so it passed. Woo! Good news. OK, so yeah, so that's basically um, that's basically all for the truffle demo. Um, I just wanted to show that everything does work as usual um, for the most part. So yeah, so. That is how you would uh, test your contract locally on Ethermint. So yeah, so now. <laughs> Maybe we can pause here for a second and you can make a recap of what you have done so far. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, so uh, yeah, so what I did so far is just, so I made a truffle project here for it's just a usual truffle project. Um, added a contract uh, and wrote a test as well, and then updated the truffle config to use localhost 8545 um, as a network. And then I started a local ethermint node. So this was just through the chain safe slash ethermint repository um, on the main development branch. You just do run the init script um, to start the node slash daemon, and then it prints out a command for running the server. This is also in the docs as well and the readme. Um, yes, and you just run this to start the server, and then you are able to test your contract and deploy it as usual as you would with Ganache or something like that. So yeah, that is, yeah, that's all for Truffle. That's all for now. Okay, yes. moving on. Yeah, moving on. Um, um, so, okay, so I have a couple questions um, regarding uh, asking if there's things that don't work here that do work on Ethereum. So this is a really good question because before a there was a lot of issues with um, getting this to work. Um, on Ethermint versus Ethereum. So um, let me 
so for truffle, I think for the most part, okay, there's one thing I noticed when I was doing this um, that doesn't really work as expected, and it's like the subtract method. So I'll just show you. It's, it's weird because with ganache, um, this I believe should work, but I think in Ethermint, it might be to do with the transactions being like added um, like differently or being committed differently, but I'm not 100% sure, but I'll just, I'll show you guys. So, so counter.add and then counter.subtract. So if counter starts at zero and you add and then you subtract, it should still be zero. However, I noticed when I was testing this that that sometimes wasn't the case and it doesn't seem to subtract. So let's see what happens. Um, Okay, starting the node. And then. I'll be surprised if this works. Okay, so first test is good. Yeah, this does, yeah. So it clearly didn't subtract. Um, so I think either this transaction got rejected. Um, yeah, I think either this, trans probably this transaction got rejected internally, I'm not, 100% sure. I think if you added like a timeout here or something that was like, wait, just like wait a second for the next block, then it would probably be fine. Um, but if you add another subtract, this does actually work. So yeah, that's like one of those weird things um, that might need to be like worked around. It's, oh, what just happened? What? Can we just restart this? Maybe I ran out of. Um, okay. So yeah, that's something that probably wouldn't normally have happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, another thing. So yeah, I'll sh this I think will work with the double subtract. However, it probably shouldn't, but I think it's because of the transaction ordering, like I said. Um, so yeah, maybe like something like that, you'd have to be careful of. Ideally, this will just work. Um, right now it doesn't, but yeah. But it, it doesn't work in Truffle, but in if you write a, a script, I'll, in the next step, I'm gonna show you with Web3.js, but if you do it with Web3.js, this does actually work as expected and you, doing an add and a subtract does work. So yeah, so with the double subtract, it works now. So I'm pretty sure it's with the transaction ordering. Um, and then yeah, another thing that's different is that you have to actually, um, okay, so I'm gonna do, so yeah, there is another difference, but I'll show you when I'm doing the, the Web3 uh, demo. Um, yeah, so like little things like that, you might want to be careful of. Um, okay, so okay, so yeah, so I'm gonna do now a little web three JS demo. So I'll just put it in here. Um, I'll just make like a scripts or something. Um, okay, so you want to do mpmi web3 in whatever directory you're using. And then I'll do like just counter.js. Okay, so so 
Okay, so we're going to just import Web3. Acquired Web3. Web3 providers, don't HTTP provider. And then we'll just import our uh, our build. So in the truffle builds, it contains actually the ABI um, and the bytecode which we need to deploy. So I'm just gonna import that as well. Um, so build contracts counter. So yeah, it's all that all that good stuff you need is in here. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to so we can. First thing we're going to need is um, a function just for getting our account. Um, so this can be through just the normal web3.eth.getaccounts. So await web3.eth.getaccounts. Um, return. Just, I can log this for now. And then return. Let's return the first account since Etherman only starts the fun account. So let's run this. Um, cool. Okay, so node. Oh. I don't know if I should semicolon or not. Okay, so yeah, so here we go. So first account, and we'll only account. Cool, so that worked, woo. Um, so yeah, so then next I'm going to do a contract deployment. So this is a bit more exciting, I suppose. <laughs> so some function, so deploy, so this will be a generic, function just to deploy any contract. Um, so yeah, so whoops, sender. Um, so three.eth.contract. So and then we're going to take, so the contract data that we're going to pass in is going to be just this counter. Um, so then you initialize this using the counter ABI, uh, and then you can return contract dot deploy, um, and then arguments. So this is the constructor arguments, um, if there are some. Uh, this the counter doesn't have any, but I'm just going to leave this in here just so that you can see what it would be like if there were contract arguments. And then the data is the the bytecode that's also in this in the ABI, or sorry, not the ABI, the the build. Um, so no comma. And then we can send it. So it's going to be from our sender. Uh, gas. Let's just give it a lot of gas. Let's see. Um, so yeah, so one difference as well with uh, when you're using Ethermint is that you have to specify the actual um, gas, I think, otherwise it, it defaults to zero. Um, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, yeah, so function. So then on our instance, we can say return instance. Um, we can also say log deploy contract. And then we can print out the, so we can say the name. So let's say contract data dot name, contract name. And then also we can print out the address. So, and then uh, 
constituents dot options so address. Okay, cool. So and then it's just catching errors, nice and safe. Um, cool. Okay, so this is just a good old deploy function. Um, should be the same as usual for the most part. Um, then you would also want to make sure you have your gas and gas price defined. Um, so yes, let's do, so now let's actually deploy, let's call this function and, uh, and, and then deploy the counter and interact with it. So we'll just set our from to be get account. So I'll just erase this for now. Um, and then let counter, so now we can call deploy contract and then pass in counter as well as from, and then we don't need any args right now. So let's deploy and interact. So let's call this and see what happens. Hopefully I didn't mess up. Cool, okay, yeah, so there we go. It deployed, woo! So this is our, our address. Um, yeah, so this is all, I guess. Uh, so yeah, now we can interact with it. That worked well. Um, cool, so, whoops. And then, okay, so now let's call add, methods.add. Send from I, let's send it some gas should be enough. Um, uh, and then and let's get the count after this. And then dot call. So yeah, dot send is for sending normal transaction. Dot call is for calling. Um, same as usual. So yeah, so this is view, so you can use dot call. Um, so from from gas gas. Well, it shouldn't really need any gas, but I'm gonna put it in there just in case. Cool. Okay. So then. And then we can log the count. Cool. Okay. Uh, okay. Deployed. I'm gonna remove this log. Cool. So count is one. Woo! As expected. So let's do this again. But then with subtracting. So unlike unlike trouble, this does work. Um, so yeah, I don't know if truffle's just being funky or ether in, but yeah. Okay, so cool. So now this is going to be subtract and then it should be zero. Oh, what just happened? Oh, whoops. Cool. Okay. Cool, okay. So yeah, it did subtract as expected. So woo, that's good, that works. So uh, yeah, that's basically all for um, Web3, um, Web3.js. So yeah, so this is how you would deploy and interact with a contract. Um, and then yeah, and then something like just a transfer would also work as usual um, with this. So yeah. Cool, so that's all for this part. Um, any questions? Okay. This will be a good moment to ask the questions you have. Cool. Uh, so yeah, so there is more. Um, I'm going to show you also MetaMask and 
remix as well as the Geth console. Um, so there is, there are more parts, so stay tuned. So yeah, um, if there are no more questions, I can uh, continue to MetaMask. Cool, okay. Um, going once, going twice. <laughs> okay, we move on. Okay, cool. All right, so, so yes, this is my browser. <laughs> Uh, so I will show you MetaMask. So yeah, so for, um, so the first step is going to be just getting your private key out of the local node. So every time you uh, run the init script, the key does actually change. So you're going to need to re-import it. If you don't want it to change, um, I can show you how to do that. So, so first I'll just show you importing into MetaMask and um, setting a transfer. So you're gonna use emit CLI um, and the key is the subcommand. So you can see that there is our unsafe export ETH key option here for exporting your Ethereum private key. It is like it says unsafe, so don't do anything too important with this. Um, so yes, because it just prints out your private key. So here we go, our private key. So now I'm gonna just copy this and oh yeah, and then the last thing is just the name of your key, which was specified in the init script as well. So open up MetaMask. Um, and then we're gonna switch this to uh, localhost 8545. Uh, yep, so, and then import our private key. So just paste, paste that in right in there. paste that in there and then sometimes it takes okay there we go so yeah so sometimes it takes a while to update but there we go so one eth so this is not actually one eth it's actually um however many photons it is like one to the 18 i guess or 10 to the 18 um however it just says eth because we're using metamask um but yeah so now i'm gonna just do send so i'll just send it to my other account Send, let's say like 0.33 or something like that. Uh, confirm. All right, so we can see that we added it and there was a noise. Okay, yeah, confirm transaction. Cool. So, yeah, so our balance went down and account one now has the balance we sent. So, that was cool. So, yeah, woo, MetaMask transfer. So, yeah, so now that we have um, our account in MetaMask, we can actually, I'm not sure what's going on here. I think MetaMask is doing something funny in the background. Um, but yeah, so now remix time. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so for remix, um, same idea for the most part. I'll turn this off dark mode. So yeah, so I'll just pick counter. You can pick anything. Um, and then compile that as usual. And then we can go to our deploy and run. So instead of JavaScript VM, we're going to pick injected web3. And then it's going to open up MetaMask. Um, and then, yeah, using account six as usual. Uh, sure. So yeah, just connect your MetaMask account there. And there you go, it shows up. Cool. And then just deploy. Um, confirm. All right, so added good transaction. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like it deployed. So yeah. So now we can interact with it. So we have our counter here. Let's do add. Mm, get counter one. Okay, cool. We can do subtract again. Uh, and then try counter again, and it's zero. Okay, cool. So that is, um, yeah, that's for setting up a deployment and testing environment through Remix. 
it's pretty simple. You just have to import your private key into MetaMask and connect that to Remix. So yeah, um, yeah, that's all for for Remix, I suppose, and MetaMask. Uh, are there any questions for this part? Okay. Adriana, did you get any questions? I have not. And I'm wondering if because it's so clear or because we went to <laughs> <house now. laughs> Yeah, I hope it's because it's clear. <laughs> For the most part, it's really similar to Ethereum or the same, which is... Okay, the, I'm getting some feedback. feedback. Daniel says it's very clear. Thank you. It's okay. clear. Okay. Okay, okay, great. <laughs> I, I need some more feedback. So if anyone has more feedback from us, whatever the feedback is, we are very open to it. We just want to know if we are running too fast or <laughs> if we lost anyone on the road. Okay, people, don't be shy. <laughs> Only feedback is that the chat could be opened up next time. Okay, Cam. Not it. <laughs> We're just doing that for prevention because we don't want people to uh, spam the chat in case we have some very, um, let's say, very open people who want to speak about everything in the chat and we want to keep it private, but um, we'll see how we can accommodate that next time. Oh. Cool. Okay. Thank you Tom, for understanding. Yeah. <laughs> we got some zoom bombs at some point and now we're taking all the uh, measures we can to make sure that we're not going through the same um, episode again. Cool. Um, oh, someone asked, is it possible to share the URLs of the Ethereum GitHub I'm using? Yeah, for sure. So, um, so yeah, it is just github.com. Yeah, it's actually the first thing that showed up. So yeah, it's github.com slash chain safe slash ethermint. Um, so I will share that with everyone. So yeah, so this is the, the repo. Uh, yeah, I'll also, I'll also link the docs while I'm at it. Um, cool. So yeah, so that's that's all for the remix stuff. So, okay, so next I'm gonna show just the geth console. So, um, so you guys may be familiar with this, but you're gonna need um, Go Ethereum installed on your computer. Um, so I already have it, so I'm just gonna just run geth. Um, so you do geth attach, uh, localhost 8545. Cool, and then, yeah, so then as before, um, so you need your local node running, of course, to attach it. Um, so now you can do stuff like you thought get block. So yeah, so all the usual APIs are available for this. So you can do uh, get blocks. So now we have our first block and then our latest block looks like it was 202. So let's try getting that. Oh, okay. Maybe it wasn't 202. <laughs> 200. Okay. I don't know. What, I don't know what block it was that our latest one was. All right. Well, okay. Maybe that wasn't your latest block, but yes, yeah, so, but you can, um, get blocks. Oh, whoops, it's because it's, it's because it's hex. Haha. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> I got pranked by the hex. So yeah, so, okay, so we can get our latest blocks as well. Um, if you do nothing, let's try latest. Cool, yeah, so that did get us our latest block, so it's 209. Um, cool, so then we can also do ethot accounts. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to show sending, uh, just a transaction through this. So you can, you can do like anything with the guest console essentially, but, um, these are just a few of the, oh, whoops, these are just a few of the useful things you might want to do just for a quick test. So we can do, so yeah, we're going to send a transaction. Um, so we're going to just send it from our first account and then we're going to send it to, I'm just going to copy paste here the whoops the the zero address um okay so zero 
and then value we can do like uh yeah we can do like zero x one or something okay cool all right it's sent yay so then we can do let's get the transaction um make sure that it went through so yeah it looks like oh this is yeah so this is the transaction data and then we can get the the receipt cool yeah so then you can see that it did go through because of the status um the two transaction hash etc uh yeah so um there's that i can do eth dot get balance and we can try let's try the the zero account and make sure that it's actually uh zero actually zero x one or one as they say uh yeah so it's one cool um and you thought get balance of uh, you thought accounts at zero cool so i don't know what this is in normal numbers but i assume it's what we wanted yeah it looks like it is because metamask said we had 0.669 and then minus a small amount for for sending so yeah so that's that for the geth console for the most part um yeah is there anything else anyone wants to see um if we have time i could show maybe the is there okay so someone asked is there light client support uh this is a good question. I think there is, but I think, yeah, I'm not totally sure. I think there is though. Um, I'll have to get back to you on this. I would suggest reading the the Cosmos documentation <laughs> for stuff like this. Um, yeah, cool. Um, Okay, so yeah, any more questions? Uh, okay, so someone also asked, is the networking over P2P or is the EVM quite literally the only thing in common? So yeah, so the EVM is the only thing in common, so the EVM and the RPC API. Um, yeah, the networking is not over P2P, it's over um, whatever Tenderment uses, um, which I, I'm not totally sure what it is actually. Um, haven't really got into that, but yeah, I was just yeah. So okay, so yeah, it's a custom uh, networking scheme. So yeah, cool. Yeah, so I was just looking at the the docs for that as well. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, cool. So. Any more questions? If there's time, I could show um, web sockets um, subscriptions or something like that. Because yeah, because recently Ethermint did get web socket support, um, so I could show just like subscribing to blocks if people are interested, or subscribing to things. Unless there's any other questions. If it is a question about time, uh, we have scheduled two hours for the workshop. It okay. only has one hour, so we have time. All right. um, the question is, is if people want to join for and uh, also want to stay for the second part of the workshop, uh, what Elizabeth was, uh, was saying, they're very happy to. So, yeah, it's all going to take an hour, though, this part. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Let's, let's see the other features as well. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so, so yeah, so there is actually, um, oh, what, I'm just gonna, okay, I'm gonna turn off MetaMask for now because I think it's doing something funny. Okay, so we'll just close that for now. So, so yeah, so for, um, so for WebSockets, um, it currently, runs on a local host 8546, which is the same as Geth, um, Geth's 
web sockets by default. Um, so yeah, so through, so I haven't used this. Okay, so so this is just um, just a pretty simple uh, web sockets client. Um, so let me just find everything for this. Um, okay, so I think I want, oh wait, I want C actually. Okay, so I'm going to connect to the current server that's running on localhost 8546. So yeah, WS cat is just a, you can install it with npm. So it's like npm install dash g WS cat. It's just a WebSockets client um, or server or whatever. Uh, so yeah, so now I can do, um, so you can send the usual JSON RPC uh, stuff through here. So you can do the usual stuff like, I'm, just gonna, I'm gonna have to type everything, but yeah, but you can do stuff like this, like ETH get block number. Oops. Um, so yeah, all the usual queries do work through WebSockets as well. What did I do? I did something wrong. Or maybe I, okay, I'm, I'm not sure what I, huh, okay. Let's try this. Okay, I'm not sure what exactly I did wrong there. Um, I have a comma. Oh, oh my God, thank you. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's fixed. So, okay, so it does take a second to reply, but I'll just give it. Yes, there we go. So we just got a response. Yay. I can do block number. Uh, yeah, it takes a second to reply. Um, it's not as fast as uh, HTTP. Okay, cool. So that's our latest block number. So now we can subscribe also to two things. So this is, so I'm just going to show you for now just new blocks. Um, but all the, all the calls that are in the Go Ethereum uh, like subscription docs do all work. Um, so yeah, so this is just subscribing for new heads or new blocks. So that's our subscription ID. And then, yes, there we go. Got a nice new block. So yeah, so this is our ID as before. And then the result here is just our nice block. So yes, yeah, so now we're just gonna keep getting blocks until we unsubscribe. See, so yeah, I just got a few, cool. Let's wait, let's get another one. 43 cool yeah so that's, that's subscribing to blocks so um i believe web3.js will also support that um yeah a lot of eth tooling i find now uses this so yeah that's cool so now uh i will show i just show unsubscribing because i don't want any more uh yeah don't want any more blocks so Subscribe. Then... Cool. So yeah, now unsubscribed. So yeah, I won't shouldn't get anything else. Um, I guess I can show also just like new transactions. Um, so that would be so instead of new heads, you do new pending transactions. Okay, cool. So now we're subscribed to any new transactions. So I can do the same thing I did before with MetaMask and just send a, oops, just send a basic transfer. And then it should show up in our 
in our WebSockets client. Whoops, not custom. Uh, so yeah, I didn't restart the node, so this should still work. Uh, let's transfer. So I'm just gonna send a transfer. Um, and then this should hopefully show up here. Yeah, okay, there we go. So we got this, so the result is just the transaction hash. So let's do ETH dot get transaction receipt. And then give it a second. There we go. Okay, cool. So looks like our transaction did go through, so that's good. So yeah, so that's basically all for WebSockets. Um, yeah, like look at the Geth docs if you want to um, try other stuff with it. There's also, you can also subscribe to logs as well. Uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's like mostly all I have. Um, yeah, are there any more questions or anything anyone wants me to go over again? Everyone wants to see uh, the thing that Elizabeth went through over again, one more time. Is Was there something unclear in the process? We can repeat that over again. Lunch said everything was clear. Cool. Okay. Thank you, lunch cam. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? There is no wrong answer here, so <laughs> we can go over it again, no problem. Anyone here would like to use Ethermint in one of their future projects? Maybe Elizabeth can help you with some ideas or questions that you have. Okay, not yet. <laughs> I'll just link the resources in uh, Discord as well. Cool. Cool, okay, yeah. Um... Yeah, if that's all, then thank you guys for for coming and listening. Hope it was helpful. Uh, yeah, if you have any more Ethermint development questions, um, yeah, feel free to ask on the Discord or the Telegram. Uh, yeah, um, cool. Okay, how can people best reach you in case they have questions? Um, I'm usually in the Discord, so yeah, so there's uh, there's a Cosmos EVM channel that I'm in, and then there's also the Chainsafe um, Chainsafe Ethermint channel that I'm also in. So probably one of those two would be good. Um, and then also, yeah, I'm also in the Telegram group. So any of those should work. I'm not sure if the Discord link for the Chainsafe one is in the readme let me for the the repo let me check if not i can just link it maybe you can pass here your um your username from discord yeah yeah sure okay yeah so there's a link to the cosmos discord in the readme so in the cosmos 
EVM channel, I check that one. And then I'll also post my Discord name. Um, so it's Elizabeth number 5218. Okay, cool. Okay. Cool, yeah. Okay, great. Any other resources you'd like to share here? We'll we'll just put it here in the channel. Uh, we also have a Code Us workshop channel, which is under initiatives in Cosmos Discord. So in case people have questions, they'll put them there. This is I also saw that um, uh, Fede linked the docs on Intermint recently, a few days ago. Are there final? Uh, wait, sorry, could you say that again? Um, I saw that Federica linked the Intermint docs a few days ago, but mm -hmm. also that you have linked here. Uh, are those final or? Uh, they're not final. There's um, like there's information in them. Um, like most of what I showed in this demo is in there. Um, however, they're not fully complete yet, so we are going to continue to be adding stuff to the docs. So, for example, stuff like um, starting like multiple nodes locally um, is going to be added soon. There's currently, it is in the docs, but it's, you have to do it all manually, which is like a bit of a, like a hassle, I guess. So, yeah, so we're going to add as well how to do it in a more automated fashion. Um, and we're going to also add a bunch of stuff on just like the more background on Ethermint. Um, so like, yeah, like how it works with Cosmos and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, so yeah, the docs are still in development. They're not final. Cool. What are the next deliverables that you would like to want to have for, for Ethermint in the near future? Um, like for Ethermint, like Ethermint as a module or as like a chain or, or uh, just like in general. Chain, what, whatever comes to. Uh, yeah. Come. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess one thing we're currently working on is um, like benchmarking. So seeing like how it compares to Ethereum. Um, so yeah, so that will be interesting. So we'll hopefully have some results released like in the next few weeks probably. Um, on like how it compares to Ethereum in terms of like throughput and stuff like that. So, so yeah. Um, and then what else? And then just, um, yes, yeah, so like I said about local networks. So um, easily deploying multiple nodes locally and connecting them. Um, yeah, what else? Um, as well, yeah, just like our I'm just updating to like the latest Cosmos SDK commit because um, we're currently on a slightly older commit. Um, so yeah, just updating to the newest release, like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and then continuing to just like test everything with tooling and making sure that everything works like as intended. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I say yeah. Those are probably the the main things. Perfect. Looking yeah. forward for new updates on this. Um, thank you so much for joining us in this uh, Code Us workshop. I hope people that have joined learned a lot.